Vigil and Family Passes are available. Not a student? It's a great way for adults and seniors to relax poolside. Don't let the heat keep you and your family from diving into fun this summer. Visit hcparkandrec.com for details and see you at the pool. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. You know, we've begun a new month. The month of May is among very many designations. It's salad month. It's hamburger month. Um, it's, it's also uh, mental health awareness month. And, and we're not talking salads or hamburgers right now. We're talking mental health. And we've got the Community Guidance Center here to help us in our conversation Shelly Nippus, uh, Sean Brisbane, and Colin Nordby with us this morning in the studio. Uh, for our Facebook viewers, if each of you could sort of tell us who you all are. Okay. Shelly um, is pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, go ahead, Shelly. <laughs> Shelly, start it off. <laughs> um, I'm Sean Brisbane. I'm the uh, Chief Operations Officer at the Community Guidance Center. Uh huh. I'm Colin Norby. I'm the director of the base service unit and uh, the outpatient mental health department here at the Community Guidance Center. Let us start, um, and Shelley, maybe you can sort of lead us off here this morning. Let us start by telling folks what the Community Guidance Center actually is. We are a come on closer to the microphone. We are a community mental health agency, so we service um, Indiana County. Mm -hmm. um, we provide outpatient mental health, and we have other programs. Um, we have. An adult partial, which is a step-down program, um, and you guys can correct me if I'm yeah. speaking out of school. We have um, um, an alpha program, which is for students, um, mm -hmm. which is a mental health program, but there's an educational component to it. Mm -hmm. um, we have a full complement of psych services, so we have um, psychiatry on staff mm -hmm. um, for those consumers that need that level of care. Um, case management, which is like a resource coordination. We do um, develop, developmental and intellectual disabilities supports, um, family-based therapies where the therapists will go into the family home to help the child and the family is encouraged to join. Uh -huh. um, and then we have a non-clinical program, which is a psych rehab program that helps in transition and helps people integrate um, learning social skills and daily living skills. So quite a few programs yeah. up on the hill. <laughs> sort of ap approaching mental health from every angle that you possibly can think of, really, when you get right, right, right. to it. Oh, yeah. 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 Full um, continuum of care. Yeah. And, and that's the amazing thing about it. Um, uh, there can be, uh, and, and we hear the stats all the time about uh, mental health uh, and mental illness uh, and, and how many people suffer from it. Uh, and, you know, the different types and, and, and all of those things. But there can be all kinds of barriers to people seeking treatment for mental health. Um, and, and Colin, Sean, uh, maybe you could help us to understand some of those barriers. One of those is, of course, that we hear it all the time, the word stigma. There is a stigma yeah. that is attached to somebody who is seeking treatment for mental illness or, or having mental health problems. Is there not? Oh, yeah, yeah. Most, def most definitely. Yeah, yeah. We we come across it all the time. You know, people um, you know don't want to get into treatment or are concerned. Um, you know, what family members will think or what colleagues will think or friends. Um, you know, and there's a lot of unfortunately still judgment surrounding the whole idea of mental health. Yeah, yeah. And it touches you know every socioeconomic level. You know, it doesn't matter what socio socioeconomic level you're on. You know, mental health affects everyone. And you know, half it says one in five people. Uh, suffer from mental illness, and you know only half of those people get treatment. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's five out of five. I, I believe it's one hundred percent of people are affected by mental health. Yeah. Uh, whether it's them personally or secondary, it affects everyone. It's a family. Um, it's a family struggle. Mm -hmm. So everyone has to be on board supporting. Um, and and particularly from the community guidance center angle, um, for a lot of people seeking uh, treatment for mental illness or for mental health concerns. Uh, has an economic side to it. Uh, they say to themselves, I can't afford to do that. Um, I can't afford to take the time off. I can't afford uh, what would be a very costly venture just in, in seeking mental health treatment. I can't afford the investment of time. Community Guidance Center takes care of a lot of that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we do, especially with the base services unit. You know, we have county funding available for individuals that, um, you know, don't have health insurance so we can get people into services. Um, we accept, you know, 
most major insurance carriers, um, you know, one of the big things that I always told people is, you know, it's, it's not any different than going to your PCP. You know, if you're going to get checked out for, you know, your heart or your annual, annual physical, you know, that's a commitment you make to your physical health. You know, this is the same sort of thing for, for the mental health. Um, you know, it's just as important, you know, to make sure that we're getting that checked out and to follow up on as well. And to piggyback off that, I, I said just last night I was talking to a friend. Um, he's a pretty high-level professional, and I uh, was nervous about going to a facility to receive mental health. And I said, you know, it's 2024. You know, there's awareness now. There's compassion now. People people get it. Um, and, you know, with telehealth, you don't even have to go anymore. Mm-hmm. You could stay in the comfort of your home and get services. But it should be no different than having a gym membership to LA Fitness or Planet Fitness and going to your PCP. It should be part of your, you know, holistic approach to overall wellness. Yeah. Yeah, um, and to just to feed off of that, um, there's certainly a fear that is involved, not only with uh, what others might think of you or about the economics of it, but there's a fear also of what am I going to find out about myself that maybe I don't even want to know. Uh, what is at the root of what my problem is? Maybe I don't want to explore that deeply into myself. Yeah, right. yeah. We, we, you know, some people certainly run into that in in treatment, and it's. It can be scary, most certainly, um, but I think ultimately going at it from the right lens, from the right approach, um, can be a safe journey and can be something worthwhile to explore and kind of get to some of those answers and, and hopefully overcome some of the difficulties that might come from that. Defining mental health and defining mental illness uh, can be difficult as well. Uh, and we might be surprised at, at what really qualifies uh, as mental health or unhealthy mental behaviors or mental uh, states in which we find ourselves. Yeah, you know, people suffer from panic attacks. Um, the mental component of that is extremely important and, and treatable. Um, people can, uh, there, are, there are all kinds of different ways that mental illness uh, can, can manifest itself, are there not? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, we you can see it, you know, every day. Just us being a little bit nervous coming here to do this radio show today. Um, you know, <laughs> what? The, the, yeah, the whole yeah, way up, absolutely. You know, the whole way up to you know the more significant side of things when you're talking about things like bipolar, schizophrenia. You know, it's a, a wide array, wide continuum of you know what you might see with someone who's experiencing some mental health difficulties. And it's you know people wonder, people that are uninformed about it or or kind of are leaning towards the stigma side of like this is a negative outlook if I go to therapy. Oh, just what, put your big girl pants on. What is yeah, what is yeah. what is what is therapy? And you know, to boil it down in my perspective as a therapist, you know, we all have a puzzle and when you come into therapy we dump that puzzle pieces out and mm. we sit together as a team and we start putting that puzzle together yeah. to make it clear. Yeah. A more beautiful picture. It's a good way to, to, to portray that. I like that. Um, let's talk about steps. Because uh, when somebody is suffering from a mental health problem, uh, it probably, I would get assume with everybody, there are a number of steps they take themselves through before they finally decide, I'm going to seek help. What are those steps, uh, and, and what's the very first? You know, I, I, there's Granting a, that it's different with every, every yeah, person. Yeah, there's a lot of internal steps that I think people struggle through from the you know, acceptance that, you know, they might be struggling with something to the ability and willingness to say something out loud to someone. Um, you know, I think oftentimes the first step is seek out a friend, seek out a, a family member, you know, someone that you can confide in just to get some support, to reach out to someone, um, you know, and then from there it's, it's you know, making a phone call. Yeah. And then pre-contemplative stage of change and then contemplative stage of change and then action and then maintenance. That's the stages of change. Uh-huh. So in pre-contemplative, I'm just – People are telling me that they've noticed changes in me. You know, you're staying in, you're not going out, you're not socializing. You're, you're in the dark room a lot, you're sleeping more, you're eating less. You know, mm-hmm. those are just some symptoms. And then I start to realize, like, okay, a lot of people are telling me this. So then you're in the contemplative stage, stage of change, and it's like, okay, maybe they're right. And then it's action. Mm-hmm. Then it's, you know, getting, like you said, maybe a friend, maybe a family member. Yeah. Somebody to have the compassionate inquiry to say, like, not what is wrong with you? Not what is wrong with you. What happened to you? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Tell me your story. Yeah. You could say that to a stranger. You could help anybody. You see somebody down at the gas station, you could say, you know, how are you? And, you know, if you mm-hmm. can read their body language, as mm-hmm. a, a, any person can be a helper. I think that's what I want to communicate with everybody. Like, you don't have to be a licensed therapist or a doctor to be a helper. Yeah. Anyone can help. 
with compassionate inquiry, which is asking what happened to you. Yeah. Colin Nordby, Sean Brisbane, Shelly Nippis with us this morning, the Community Guidance Center. Uh, you all have your, your green on. Green is a, is a, a color that uh, is associated with Mental Health Awareness Month, is it not? Symbolizes hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's the main message to get through to a lot of people is, uh, you know, your situation is not hopeless. Uh, some, and, and people will withdraw into themselves when they have uh, a problem going on. Uh, and and you know, not a lot of it has to do with the environment in which they were raised, the type of personalities they're surrounded with, uh, things within their own selves. And, and we understand that. Uh, breakthroughs are necessary for a lot of folks. Um, and Community Guidance Center is, is all about those breakthroughs, is it not? Most certainly. Yeah. You are not your diagnosis. No, no, it, it's it's yeah. okay to not be okay. Um, you know, we all have those days, those moments, and it's it. We just you know want everyone to know that it's okay to not be okay and to reach out and ask someone for help. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, to anyone you know listening to this or hearing this at home, you know, if you haven't made the step, like it, it is, it is life changing to actually, you know, care for yourself enough to to get the help. Yeah, you know, more people need help than 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 anyone even understands. You know, that person that you see smiling or laughing, or that, that might be the person that needs help the most. Mm -hmm. And people around, you know, they, they're they a big part of this. The people who surround somebody. Um, they notice changes in behavior, yes, but they, they might notice that, that, um, that for instance, a, a flash of anger that becomes more common. Mm -hmm. uh, they might notice that somebody seems overly exuberant uh, all yeah. of a sudden. Uh, and that can be a sign that something is going on within themselves. Um, uh, the, the path to health is such a varying path. It, 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 for every single person, it's, it's different uh, and it's not the same. So that's where you guys all come in. So how does someone avail themselves of the services of the Community Guidance Center? What's the typical way that people contact you? Uh, typically, it's, you know, a phone call. Um, we get calls, you know, on a daily basis for individuals seeking out um, services. We get referrals from primary care providers. You know, it's just letting someone that you're, that you're involved with know, whether it be your primary care physician or... Um, or picking the phone up to calling yeah. the yeah. office. Um, and we can, you know, get you in, do an intake, um, you know, help determine what might be the best fit for you in terms of services um, and get someone started to, to get them some of the help that they need. Yeah. All starts with recognition, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Recognizing w that there is a problem. Uh, and sometimes it takes somebody in your life to, to convince you of that. And sometimes it's something that you can finally convince yourself of. Uh, but but you got to do it. Got to do it. Telephone numbers, um, contact websites, uh, social media, all of those a part of Community Guidance Center? They are. Um, there's a toll-free number that is answered 888-686-1991 um, or even locally 724-465-5576. Um, um, phone calling is the best way. I mean, you can go to the website. Um, but you, we don't book appointments on the website just yeah. due to the nature of our, our business um, and social media. Again, we are on Facebook, but um, we don't like to respond to messages. We like a voice. Sure, so. sure. Establishing that line of communication right okay. off the bat. Well, it's been good having you with us here today. Can I get you back at some point later in the month? Sure. It's Mental Health Month, <laughs> and, and yeah. we'll... We'll, we'll arrange that and see if okay. we can't get you to come back and visit with great. us again. That would be great. Sounds great. Terrific. Thank Terrific. you very much, Tom. Thanks for Our pleasure. Thanks, Todd. It's the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. We're a little late getting to Boomer Sports, but this was a good conversation to have, our conversation with uh, the folks from Community Guidance Center. Boomer, brought to you by S&T Bank.